Hello and welcome to this video in which we will introduce the idea of a real sinusoid as a discrete time signal. And so uh, on the screen I actually have uh, a definition, a mathematical definition of what a real sinusoid would be as a discrete time signal. You can see that it's a function of n, uh, which is the index. I also have a term omega, which is frequency. And I have an A, which is amplitude. And I have a theta, which typically is a phase shift. And what this does is it basically takes a cosine waveform of a given frequency. Now this is a radian frequency. And it gives us samples uh, spaced at every integer. So um, I have a couple plots that show what these different parameters mean. So in this plot, uh, we have the red signal is uh, just cosine pi over 4n with an amplitude of 1. The green signal is uh, 3 cosine pi over 4n. This guy has an amplitude of 3. And you can see on the graph over here that uh, indeed the uh, 3 cosine pi over 4n terms are three times as large as the cosine uh, pi over 4 terms. Um, so basically the amplitude just shrinks or uh, expands. If it's greater than 1, it expands. If it's less than 1, it shrinks the uh, signal vertically. And you can see that each one of these uh, green points is three times the red point. Okay, so um, that's an example of amplitude. Frequency uh, basically uh, tells us how fast the signal wiggles. But with discrete time frequencies, you get something interesting happening. Let me illustrate with this picture. Okay, so the red um, waveform here is, an at, or is a frequency of pi over 4. And you can see that um, it takes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight samples to give you a complete um, a complete cycle of the cosine waveform. Okay, over here on this green plot we have pi over two, which is a higher frequency than pi over four. And you can see that it takes one, two, three, four samples now to go through an entire cycle of the sine wave or the cosine waveform. So the higher frequency here means this guy's wiggling faster than this guy here, which still makes sense, right? And finally, we make omega equal to pi, and you can see that it only takes two samples to go through the cosine. I basically have the cosine at plus one, the cosine at negative one, cosine plus one, and so on. So again, as I make um, omega larger, uh, up going from pi over four up to pi, uh, the waveform starts to wiggle faster. But now here's the weird part. As I make omega equal to three pi over two, you'll notice that this graph down here is exactly the same as this graph for omega pi over 2. Um, okay, so this is, the, this is the weirdness with discrete time signals. Uh, basically, um, omega equals pi, this is the highest frequency you can get in the sense that this causes things to wiggle as quickly as possible. You can see here that every other Every other sample is changing sign, which is as fast as you can make this wiggle. And then as your frequency gets larger than pi and gets closer to 2 pi, uh, you actually discover uh, that things start to go backwards in the sense that this uh, frequency of 3 pi over 2 uh, looks the same as a frequency of pi over 2. If I had uh, graphed a uh, sinusoid with a, or a cosine waveform with a frequency of 7 pi over 4, it would look exactly like this. Okay, so um, for discrete signals, uh, frequencies of 0, so let's actually write this out. So um, when omega is 
close to 0 or to 2 pi, and it actually turns out to any integer multiple of 2 pi, this is a low frequency. And when omega is close to pi, 3 pi, uh, minus pi, etc., this is a high frequency. So what this tells us is that the highest possible frequency I can represent with a discrete time sinusoid is one with a frequency of pi. Okay. Um, so mathematically, we can actually uh, explain this. If we uh, write, uh, for example, suppose we have a signal y of n is cosine uh, some omega, and let's add 2 pi to this omega times n plus theta. Okay, so what we've done is we've said, you know, maybe this guy here was um, pi over 2, and we said, well, let's increase it by a factor of 2 pi. This term here can be written as n omega plus n times 2 pi, so we still have cosine with these other terms, but the cosine waveform is periodic with period 2 pi. So I can add m integer multiples, actually I'll circle these, I can add integer multiples of 2 pi to its argument and not change its value at all, which again is why uh, you get the situation that we had uh, as I increase omega, or as I increase the frequency, um, by a factor of 2 pi, I'm basically back where I started. Okay, so hopefully this makes sense. Uh, the last thing is to talk a little bit about periodicity of discrete time sinusoids. And so what I have here is I have, uh, again, a cosine waveform with, om with an omega of pi over 4. That's what the red represents here. The green I have a cosine waveform with an omega of 0 0.08, or I'm, I'm sorry, 0 0.8, and this is approximately, very approximately, equal to pi over 4. I mean, if you take pi over 4 and round it to one digit, you get this. But you'll notice something interesting happens in the plots. In the top plot, my values actually repeat every 8 samples. Okay, so every eight samples I get the same value. In my bottom plot, you'll notice that the values are similar to each other, but they don't actually repeat. You can see that the most easily if you look at this point here. Eight samples later, it's like this, so it's not exactly the same. And eight samples later, it's like this. Okay, and this illustrates an important thing that you need to remember. Both of these waveforms have essentially an envelope if I start connecting the dots. You know, so I do my best to try to connect the dots. Both of them have sort of this cosine envelope. And it wiggles fairly similarly, but this guy is periodic in the sense that the sample values actually repeat, you know, so eight, every eight samples I get exactly the same value, which means that this is actually periodic with period eight. Uh, the green guy, every eight samples I get something that's close but not exactly the same. And in order for a signal to be periodic, uh, for a discrete time signal to be periodic, I need to have x of n plus some capital N is equal to x of n. In the red example, this capital N is equal to 8. In this green example, there is no capital N that will make this true. That is, um, 
there will never be exactly the same value here repeating every n samples no matter what value I choose for n. Okay, So even though this signal, its envelope is periodic, and it, you might say to yourself, well, it looks periodic, this guy is not periodic. Um, and so that turns out to be an important thing to understand for certain things like uh, the discrete time Fourier transform. So um, that's a brief introduction to uh, real discrete time sinusoid signals, and hopefully you found it useful and interesting.